Good morning and welcome to Utopia Farms. It's another start to another day. So come on in and let's see what's happening today. Okay, so we're in the coverall with the new lambs. Always want to check on them because of the cold temperatures. But uh, you see under the feeder, there's a cluster of lambs there. So they snuggle together under those uh, feeders to get warm. And then we have clusters here too in the sunlight. And uh, that, that ram there is number nine. The one next to it is number 43. That's quite the size difference. But that's a nice uh, hunky little ram for somebody. Um, when he gets bigger, he's someone we'll pay attention to, see how he grows on. Um, and speaking of choosing uh, rams, uh, on Facebook uh, uh, there was a little dispute about uh, someone saying that I should castrate my uh, large rams because they'll create... Um, difficult uh, lammer, lambing for the use and um, I would like to disagree with that I think we've said uh, many times that uh, you should put appropriate appropriate rams on your use so um, I, we'd like to have the rams a little bit bigger than the use but not towering over them so that they are going to destroy them during lambing. We want them to be as similar as possible. That's why I always ask people when they come in to buy a ram uh, what size their sheep are, what breed they are, because uh, I want it to work out well for them. That being said, when we select our rams, we're going to pick for the fast growers, the widest and the longest, because that's what a ram is for. It's to create meat on your sheep. Um, also, as replacements, those ewes that can um, lamb from the nice rams like that will produce um, much better quality replacement ewes for you because they will be a uh, higher capacity, which makes lambing easier. So you need those uh, wide, long ewes, and to get that, you need a good ram. Um, I'm certainly not advocating putting a monster on a little sheep, that's ridiculous. But uh, an appropriate size large ram will improve your flock. And I would never castrate a, a ram because it was big. Um, just is counterintuitive to me. But that's my opinion, and other people have their opinions. They want a smaller sheep. So get a smaller ram. And you've seen our sheep. We do have a variety here. So that I can mix and match rams with uh, people's views and what their goals are. It's extremely important because everyone is looking for different things. Um, so we keep smaller ones, medium ones, and we keep a few uh, big ones. We don't keep a lot of big ones because that's not our goal either. And by big I mean height. Um, we will take as big as we can get for uh, length and width, however. And see all these little lambs? These are the Dorset lambs. And they're all, they're all snuggling here because there's a little bit of sunlight coming in. Not a lot, but uh, they seem quite cozy. Nobody seems stressed out. Uh, sheep. It's amazing how well they do in the cold. As long as uh, they're out of the wind and, and wet conditions um, and they can snuggle up either with each other or with the straw. Um, and I, I like to have them with a little wool coat. I, um, some sheep have less wool when they're born and uh, those ones do the poorest. Um, if they've got a nice little woolly coat on them, as soon as they're born, they, those ones seem to do much better. 
we have one in the barn that we put our little jacket on today because uh, it is it's basically a naked lamb. I, it has so little wool. So until uh, until he grows his wool in a little longer, we're just going to leave a jacket on him. But these guys are all great. And uh, a bedding pack is important when you're out in the cold too because they can snuggle in the bedding pack. Oh, you're so little. And I do find the littler, littler sheep too. They have less body mass, less uh, to keep them warm. Like this is a much better sheep here than that little guy we passed. I don't care if he's a single, a twin, or a triplet. Um, better is better. And over here we just put uh, some bedding down, some old hay. And you can see we haven't filled the creep feeders up because they are still learning how to eat it right now. But as they start cleaning it up, we'll be adding more and more um, creep feed to them. But we always like to keep the feed fresh. If it sits around in a trough for a few days, they get turned off by it, which gets musty and smelly. Rats go in it, mice go in it, birds go in it, making it dirty, and the sheep know that. So they're not gonna eat that. But uh, nothing better than straw day for the lambs. The ewes like it too, but the lambs just, uh, just totally love it. So uh, this Suffolk pen is full. And we've started another Suffolk pen. And when you got this many ewes and lambs around, even though our ewes are quiet, hi sweetheart, uh, they're still skittish because they're in with their lambs and they're getting used to the whole group situation. So you want to walk extremely quietly uh, among these sheep so that uh, nobody spooks and run over a lamb. We do have a lamb in here who does have a dislocated hip. And uh, she got run over, and it happens all the time. It's, it's pretty well the only issue we have with lambs is getting run over. And that's another reason we only put a maximum of 30 ewes in a, one of these group pens, because any more and it's, it's too much, and uh, the, the chance for accidents is too high. And we've tried numbers, like we've tried filling the whole, whole half up, we've tried uh, 50 in a pen, and 30 seems to be the magic number for us, uh, because of our barn size and our feeders and everything, seems to be the way uh, we that works well for us. Happy lammies! Happy lammies! Hi. Hi. So these guys, these are would be the oldest of the Suffolks. And some of them will be getting close to a month old now. Oh, there's my number two guy. He's that blocky little lad. And you see, he, that ram is not going to be a tall ram. He's going to be a, what we call the Canadian Suffolk. Nice, uh, nice height. Got some leg on him, but he's, he's not soaring over everybody else. But he's stocky. And he's long-bodied. And over in that pen there, right next door, that's the next group of Suffolks that's starting up. And I think we're probably going to bring another bunch over today. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Someone told me I panned through the sheep too, too quickly. So I'm just going to do a slow pan as I talk. 
because they said they didn't have a chance to have a good look at the lamb. And I do find that uh, I'm so busy, I, I tend to be rushing around. So it's, it's good. If you have suggestions for me, please mention it. Because uh, I will try my best to, to do what, uh, what you guys are looking for. Because I don't know unless you, don't, unless you tell me. So here's an example of our yearling rams. Some of these guys are taller, and some of these guys, like the ones over by Ernie, I would consider a, a much shorter sheep, uh, much closer to the uh, British size, the British Canadian that is. But uh, all of those boys there, see, all of those could go on a smaller uh, ewe flock, like Ritos and stuff like that because they're not towering monsters. But they still have the length and the width that uh, you need for if you're in the meat market. I mean, that's what it's about. Uh, choosing a small ram for a meat market is just doesn't make sense. You got to push the envelope a little bit. You don't want to destroy anyone, but you, you got to improve. The meat is where the money is. I was just showing that some of those guys aren't so tall that we sell all types of rams. Arnie. Now he's scared. You've scared him. And now you've... Hey! Max took a, a lunge at that sheep. Usually you get the one that doesn't want to go up. She was a first timer. We'll give her that credit. Yeah, first we had to move the rams out of the way because we got Dorset's going to the back. And Arnie's backing it up. We got a mixture of Dorset and Suffolk lambs in this load. So it makes offloading them a little more complicated, but nothing's impossible. So we loaded five more into this group. 
This group is almost full, I think. Maybe two more. We can release the rams. And we added, um, we added seven more to the Suffolk group. seven today which is better than it was and see how they like the big pens that new lamb back there is just pretty excited about the whole thing and we gotta go quickly back because there's a you having a lamb right now i got another smart one here you're frisky are you frisky are you smart are you smart yeah are you clever? She's my ginormous twin. She's getting tagged right now. Yep. Hi. And you're another clever one. You are. You're clever. You're clever. Woohoo. You're clever. You're going to get a tagging today. Freedom. How to lure a sheep. You get a white towel. And you pretend to be a lamb. She needs help, so we have to catch her. She's got a terrible udder, so she's going to be a cull sheep. Well, you might get her up front. Okay, so we just uh, got that you in a jug. Um, we're gonna second second guess calling her because uh, even though her udder is fairly large, she's a real easy milker and has tons of milk on both sides. Uh, if these lambs uh, suck her dry, they'll be uh, humdinger lamb. They are quite nice already. They're from Gladiator, Gladiator Twins boy and a girl so I'll make a judgment on her uh, when she starts to dry up if it dries up real nicely uh, she'll stay it's, uh, some sometimes they get really big udders and you just can't milk them properly uh, they they're just horrible udders but this one actually real easy milker just she could feed the barn anyway it's chore time um, and uh, I think we've uh, covered a lot of things today. Tomorrow we're supposed to be sorting our uh, fall ewe lambs out that are going to Nova Scotia. We were going to do that today, but uh, time just got away with us again. So we're going to aim for tomorrow. So we're going to, Ernie's going to do these chores and I'm going to make dinner. And everybody's good in the barn. And we're gonna say bye for now. And hope you join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.